final day of Wanmas. Today is the last Wanmas video, which means it's Christmas Day! Merry holiday to all of you. I hope that you have enjoyed Landmas. This has been an absolutely crazy month. There has been so much fun and there has been so much love in this little YouTube world. So thank you so much for such a fun month. I am so ready to just go sleep. I am going to go horizontal in my bed, drink a whole lot of rum and eggnog and basically never get back up. <laughs> I don't want to blabber on too much because this is going to be an incredibly long video, but for my last Landmas video, we are going to be talking about the best of beauty things that I have discovered in 2017. I went through all of my previous things I'm loving and favorites videos from the last year and picked out the uh, common denominators throughout all of those videos, and I have them all laid out here for you today, and we're going to talk about them. You guys, I, I mean, this year especially, more so than any other previous year, I have really stuck to using the same products. There were a lot of discoveries this year that have become my ride or die's uh, favorite products. So I'm excited to show you guys here, but just know that nothing here will be anything that you haven't already seen. This will be repetitive and you will have seen all of these products before, but I am excited to show you the uh, pickings of them anyway. And without further ado, let us begin. Now, before I actually start talking about the products, 2017 in particular was like a huge year for me in terms of physical changes. I had three major changes that kind of went down this year and I'm sure you guys are aware. First being Accutane. Now that has had a huge impact on my life. It has changed my skin for the better forever. I hope. I pray that I never have to go through that horrible skin rash zit explosion ever again but Accutane was one thing I did this year. I started in December of last year actually and then I ended my treatment in August. I have a bunch of videos where I talk about it so I'll link those down below but Accutane was a huge huge thing in beauty that happened for me this year and my skin has been a damn blessing ever since and I'm so thankful that Accutane happened to my face. The second major change I did was, no, I mean, I've had my hair short before, but I actually committed to the lob this year. Cutting my hair was the best friggin' thing that I have ever done for my look, for my ease of hair doing, and just for my pure joy in general. I have never loved my hair more than when I've had this lob and just wanna say a huge thank you to Axis Hair Salons and Tara for taking care of me and my hair and just making me feel fabulous all a do long day. I love it and I think that the lob will be here to stay for a good long while. And then the third and final beauty change you guys I'm sure are very much aware but I had my lips done back in July and it has had such a positive influence on my personal confidence and just me doing my makeup. Just having that extra juicy juice in my lips has been has been huge. It's so funny because I go back and watch older videos like pre me overlining my lips and it looks so alien to me now. It made such a huge difference. Like it wasn't that much of a change, but to me, like for myself, it's made such a huge difference in my confidence and not having to overline my lips anymore. It's been a huge change. And that was the, yeah, that was the third and major thing that I did this year. So I'll also link the video where I talk about it in the description box down below if you guys were like, wait, what? <laughs> she got her lips done, what do you mean? <laughs> Just wanted to toss those out there. Those were the three big major uh, changes that were made to my body <laughs> in 2017, 2017 was a crazy, crazy time, man. Lots of stuff is going down. Let's move on to the products. I'm gonna go by category and just talk through my favorites of each one. There's a few categories where I don't have a product mentioned, like blush, for example. I don't, I didn't really find that I had a specific new blush that I loved and used this year. I kind of just used my all-time nude favorites. I didn't really have a particular discovery. So if I don't mention a product, either I've forgotten it or I didn't have a favorite. So just know that uh, going onward. Favorite primer discovery of this year, you guys are, I, I'm not gonna say this every time, but you're gonna know what product is coming for all of these. The Smashbox Primerizer, this uh, absolutely changed my life. It is so, so hydrating. It's technically a primer and a moisturizer in one. If you have dry skin, this is an absolute godsend. It has solely fixed all of the dryness around my mouth when I apply makeup and it's absolutely wonderful. And Thank you so much to Smashbox for bringing this into the world this year of 2017. I love you forever, and I hope that you guys will have the chance to try this and love it as well. I'm cheating. I've got two favorite base products that I discovered this year, first being the Power Fabric. I remember I first picked this up in London back in February, I think when it first launched, and it started a long-term love for me. This is a beautiful medium to full coverage foundation. It has a very natural matte satin finish. It's become one of my go-tos for when I go to events or I'm taking photos or it's kind of like my go-to filming face. Lately I've been using a little bit more of a light <coughs> <coughs> Wow. I 
I've been using a lighter base lately, but this was definitely a huge favorite of mine throughout this year. And then obviously the lighter base that I've been loving was the Glossier Skin Tint. This was such a huge discovery for me in 2017. I've already gone through a bottle of it and I'm on my second bottle. Or was it my third? Oh crap. Either way, I've used a whole lot of it. It is amazing if you don't like a lot of coverage or if you like to be particular about your coverage and just have something super light to just warm up or have just the slightest, slightest little bit of coverage. This is beautiful and I basically exclusively wore this all summer long and leading up into the fall and I love this one so much. So those are my two base product favorites from 2017. Concealer, this is gonna shock nobody. The NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. As you can see, I've almost completely used up this tub and I also had a second tub of the creme brulee which I recently passed on because uh, it was a little bit too pink for me but this has been the only concealer basically that I've used all year this was such a huge product launch for NARS and it's the most brilliant product ever it says matte but don't be scared of that if you have dry skin because this does not crinkle or crack on me whatsoever it just totally smooths out your skin it makes it look perfect and everyone that I have told to try this any one of my friends anyone that I've known has fallen in love with this and basically ditched all other concealers for this. It's incredible. If you haven't tried it, you must. This was hands down probably one of my favorite product launches of the year over everything. This has changed my life. It's changed my whole face game and I feel phenomenal whenever I put this on, which is every single day. So thanks for making me feel great every single day, Nars. <laughs> I just realized that this is crooked and that's gonna drive me crazy when I go to edit this. <laughs> My favorite powder from 2017 is obviously Glossier Wowder. I actually worked with them on the launch of this. I did, uh, did I do three videos? Three videos in preparation of this back when it had the secret not a powder packaging and I was so excited about this. I was so excited to be working with Glossier on the launch of this and that's definitely like a big proud moment for me of 2017 was working with Glossier. So Wowder was definitely a huge, huge favorite from the year and it's an amazing powder if you have dry skin. It sets in your makeup without without taking away any glow and it doesn't give you that horrible powdery caked up settling into fine lines finish and the packaging is adorable and I love it a whole lot and that's why it's in this best of beauty 2017 video like I mentioned before a few categories I don't necessarily have a new favorite like contour that's my Kevin Aquan sculpting powder medium that hasn't changed for many many a year so I'm just gonna skip over the contour that's the same one I go to and for bronzer as well there are a few that I've discovered this year a few old favorites that I've used I did finally use up my Tarte Park Avenue Princess Bronzer and that's one of my favorite ones to use over the summer. I don't currently have that, but that was definitely a favorite from this year. But a big discovery, it's not a new product at all by any means, it's been around for a long time, but it was a new discovery for me. And that was the Benefit Hula and as you can see, there is an asparagus truck driving by. Sorry, easily distracted by asparagus painted trucks apparently. <laughs> this bronzer was new to me in 2017 and it basically changed my matte bronzer game. I've almost used this in, up in its entirety and I've got a backup uh, waiting for me. And then more recently, obviously the Bobbi Brown Golden Light Bronzer for my lighter non fake tanned skin to use in the winter time. But this was definitely my favorite from 2017 and the bronzer I used the most over the year. For highlighters, again, there's not really one that was particularly new. I definitely used Becca Opal the most over this year. I used to love the champagne pop, but I found that it was just a little bit pink for me. And I decided that Opal was the true, the true love of mine and the favorite highlighter that I've ever, ever used on my face. And I will continue to use this probably forever. It might be one of those highlighters I just always go back to. Brow products. Uh, this was a discovery in the recent months. I think I first started using this in August. August. So it's like a half year favorite, but the Benefit brow products have changed my life and changed my eyebrow game forever. Before I discovered the Precisely My Brow Pencil, I had not really been filling in my brows. If you guys had watched my video over the summertime and remember that time I went through a huge multiple month phase where I was just not doing my eyebrows at all. I didn't fill them in for so long. I was just using brow gel. So when this came into my life, I rediscovered discovered my love for filling in my brows and it's a beautiful brow product. It has a great spoolie. It's really pigmented. I use the shade number three in my eyebrows and I am in back into the bold eyebrow loving game. And then also more recently their 24 hour brow setter. Game changing product for me. I've never seen my eyebrows stay so put and feathery ever in my life. Amazing top brow products of the year of all time for sure. Can you guess which mascara I'm gonna say is my favorite? Bet you you can't. <laughs>
Lancome Monsieur Big, baby. Ah, oh, what a dream. Monsieur Big here and I were married earlier this year and it has been, it has been a love story of the ages uh, ever since. I love this mascara. I think I actually only used this mascara this entire year. My lash game has been changed forever thanks to this mascara. This is probably my fifth, fifth or sixth tube and I love everything about it. And I've also never had so many questions asked about my lashes over a year in my entire life. So thank you Monsieur Big for coming into my life and I hope that you never leave it. Unless Lancome comes out with a better one. I can't see how it would get any better. Well, wait and see, 2K18 Lancome, can you top this bad boy? I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it gets better than this. We will see. Now, I don't think that this was new to me in 2017. I'm pretty sure I've had this particular product before, but I couldn't quite remember. But a product that I have used so, so much over this year was the Dior Meteor eyeshadow. And if you guys saw my video with Anna, you'll know that I was very, very distraught to learn that they are apparently discontinuing this and that breaks my freaking heart. And they better, better, better be bringing out a product that rivals this, or at least is somewhat similar because mine is dried up. It still works actually. Like the thing comes out, but it still works perfectly and still looks beautiful on the eyeballs. So I'm not that upset about it, but that means that it's not gonna last forever. I will not have this forever and I don't know what I'm gonna do. There's nothing quite like this. There's nothing that makes the eyes look so glorious and I've pretty much worn it to every single event. Any get ready with me I've done this year, this has been my go-to. It is absolutely gorgeous. If you can still manage to get your hands on it, I would definitely recommend doing so before it's gone forever. RIP! Eyeshadow palettes! the Marc Jacobs iconic eyeshadow palettes. Definitely my most top favorite eyeshadow palette release from the year. I use these so much. Um, not this one. This one is the blue one. I don't even know why I actually grabbed that because I haven't used it yet. But these two I used so much over the year. The Glambition and the Scandal Lust palettes. I traveled a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot this year. And these were usually the two palettes that I brought with me. I just mixed the two together. This is the Scandal Lust, the more warm toned. And Glambition is the more natural, cool toned palette. And they are so beautiful. Marc Jacobs totally revamped and reformulated all of their eyeshadow palettes. Got new shades, renamed them. They're amazing my favorite 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 eyeshadow from 2017 but I also just want to give a little shout out to the Dior palettes because they also reformulated and redid all of their packaging on all of their eyeshadows and though these were super super recent discoveries for me I thought I would mention them anyway because the Dior eyeshadows are some of the most beautiful eyeshadow formulas I have ever used in my whole life and these two palettes are absolutely stunning this one is the shade 627 Embrace, a beautiful, beautiful warm toned palette. And then this one I think is uh, limited for the holidays, but it's the shade number 677 Hypnotize, which is absolutely beautiful. Look at the regal gloriousness that is this palette. These are so beautiful and I'm so happy that they made the packaging thinner. I think the next step that I would like to see from Dior and a lot of makeup companies in general actually is to just get rid of the brush. Just get rid of it. Just just give me the eyeshadow palette itself. The brushes are usually crap. I don't want to use your sponge applicator. You can condense your packaging more or just put more colors in it. What an idea. Anyway, wanted to give a shout out to those because I thought their reformulation was also incredible, but definitely, you know, have Hats off to Marc Jacobs. You you did some beautiful things this year with these iconic uh, shadow palettes. Moving on to lippities. I'm gonna mention one lip liner because though I dabble throughout the year with different lip liners and different shades and whatnot, there's obviously been one to rule them all and that is the Makeup Forever Aqua Lip Liner in the shade 3C. As you can see, I have used it. I've almost gone through it. There's just a tiny little nub in here left and it's the one lip liner that I can wear with any lip color and it looks amazing. It's very close to my natural lip color, just a little bit darker. 5C was the more nude, darker brownie version that I used in the summertime with the Magic Orange Matte Shaker. That was definitely a favorite combination from this year, but the 3C lip liner takes the hat. This was my favorite lip liner from the year. Changed my lip game, yo. Now this is gonna be an obvious one. Uh, the Matte Shakers just blew my mind this year. I don't even know how many good things I could possibly say about the Matte Shakers, but they are absolutely beautiful and they more recently came out with so, so many new shakers. Yes, I bought the Nude and Roses, and I haven't actually even used this one yet, but the Matte Shakers, Magic Orange in particular, was such a huge favorite. They are such a revolutionary product, and these were a huge, huge favorite from this year. If you haven't tried the Matte Shakers, you absolutely must. They are unlike any formula I've used before on my lips. They're matte, but they go on kind of like a stain. They just, they, you don't feel them on your lips. They last forever. If you go back and watch any of my Get Ready With Me's through the year, I'm basically using these 
solely and then more recently like later into the year i discovered the glossier generation g lipsticks which also changed my life and i pretty much just carry these two around when i go travel they're pretty much all i wear i'm going to talk about a, a couple other things but for the most part the general consensus over the year was that these two were my favorites the generation g lipsticks are amazing and the matte shakers holy hot diggity dog uh right now i'm wearing glossier jam which was a huge favorite uh jam cake and like were my top three I love them so much and apparently they're also reformulating I heard through the grapevine I'm a little concerned curious to see what they're gonna do curious to see if they're gonna add more shades we'll see I look forward to 2018 and we'll obviously keep you posted as I receive more information so those are the top 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 lip products from the year I want to mention a couple of honorable mentions and by couple I mean two and the first being the YSL Tintin bombs because I did get those a few months ago I've had them for quite a while but these two shades in particular oh it is six Crap! <laughs> I mentioned before in a video that I it was a shade number nine, but I was definitely looking at that upside down. You guys are right. It was shade six. Sorry, it's the red one. Shade number six. <laughs> Welp, aren't I just the best ever beauty guru on YouTube? I can't even provide you with the uh, correct shades. Sorry about that. Anyway, shade number six and <laughs> shade number one of the YSL Tintin Bombs. A miraculous, glorious launch from YSL this year. The packaging is glorious. The packaging is amazing. The smell is even more incredible. And they make your lips look like glossy, glossy, juicy pieces of love. And then a gloss favorite from this year was definitely the Clarins Instant. Oh, that's an itchy nose. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> the Clarins Instant Light Lip Comfort Oil in the shade number five, Tangerine. I wore this so, so much when I first discovered it and all throughout the summer. I remember when I went to Italy, this was one of the only lip products I brought with me. It smells delicious. It It is orange, but when it goes on your lips, it kind of just adds this warm, pinky, glassy, glossy look to the lips. It's incredible, and it was definitely my favorite gloss from the whole year, and I wore this one so much, and it smells, mm. It's just delightful. I love the applicator. Love it, love it, love it. Best gloss uh, launch from 2017, in my humble opinion. Oh my gosh, that's all the makeup! We went through it all already! This is the final product of the best of beauty products 2017 and this is my last landmas video of the year can you believe it i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video please let me know in the comments down below what your favorite products have been give me give me the rundown give me the lowdown what has your best of beauty been over 2017 it was such an amazing year for beauty there were so many amazing launches and beauty discoveries and changes and innovations and it's just been a lovely friggin year 2017 has been really uh, good to me and I have you guys to thank for that. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see where this YouTube world is gonna go and what exciting things are coming up in 2018. I'm going to get emotional. I'm gonna take one minute. <laughs> this is coffee, not beer, I swear. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to finish my blabbing here. Merry friggin Christmas to all of you guys. I hope that you are all doing so well I hope you're having the most beautiful day and beautiful holiday and thank you so much always for all of your love and support It honestly means the world to me. Thank you so much for supporting me in 2017 I really hope that you guys enjoyed Landmas and I'm so excited to see what 2018 is gonna bring and I'm actually just gonna be taking a tiny Tiny little bit of a break just after this Landmas onslaught you guys have lots of content to catch up on So the next time I will be seeing you is let me get this right. I've already made my January calendar I'm so excited. Okay, the next time that you guys will be seeing me will be on Sunday, January 7th. Happy New Year. I hope you have an amazing first week of January, and I will see you guys on January 7th. Thank you so much for watching my video, as always, everyone, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye! See you in 2018!